Okay, folks, welcome back, and thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to click on this video and for taking the time out of your day to watch. I decided to make a little alteration to my design here, and let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, I got these, uh, these vertical extensions bonded on in the last video, and of course, uh, you know, we're going to have the, the side skins attached at this point. And uh, also going to have a, uh, a cap on top of the uh, on top of the gunnel. I guess that's what they call it—a gunnel cap. I don't know, but um, going to have it capped off. And of course, it's going to run the entire length of the boat and all the way up to the bow. Uh, but I decided to make a little change after looking at some uh, pictures of some skiffs on the internet. And the original design for mine called for my cap to terminate right here at the transom just like so and uh, of course this is just a, a template made out of poster paper and uh, but yes that was the original design and I was just gonna wrap this uh, top part of the stern with fiberglass but after seeing some of the pictures on the internet of some of the other skiffs uh, most of those, uh, they have the uh, cap wrapping all the way around, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in just a moment. So I'm going to shut the camera off here momentarily and put this other template in place and just give you a little bit better idea of what it is I'm talking about. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. i got the template taped in place here, and this is the change I'm going to make. As you can see, this uh, cap's going to kind of wrap around this back end right here, and it's going to terminate just on the other side of this transom brace. And you can go way back to some of my early videos, and and uh, you can see what, uh, those videos of uh, when I made these pieces and bonded them to the to the transom plate there. But this is what it's going to look like. And to me, it, it just it just looks better. Uh, it, it's it's more clean looking, and um, it, it it's also going to be uh, just a lot easier when I get ready to finish this out uh, to uh, just make it look well. I, for lack of a better term, more professional looking. And uh, like I said, the original plan was to just. Uh, come up and wrap fiberglass over uh, the top of the wood right here and uh, that would have just ended up looking like wood that was wrapped with a layer of fiberglass. I think this is just cleaner looking and uh, like I said I saw some pictures of some uh, other skiffs on the internet uh, of course they're fiberglass skiffs but it, it just looked better than the way that I was going to do it I am going to have to make some alterations to the top of the transom right here. And I've got some drawings over here to show you what I'm talking about. So that would be the view from the back of the boat. And it's not drawn to scale, of course, but um, this angle right here is kind of exaggerated a little bit just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, originally, this section right here where the, where the outboard is going to mount, this is level, and then out here to this end, there was a half inch drop, and it's just a real shallow angle. You really can't even see it, and that's why I drew that up on that paper and just sort of exaggerated that, and it was just to show you how this was originally built, and let's see if we can get a a better view of that. Now you see the dash line right there? I'm going to make a cut along that dash line. Again, this is not drawn to scale or anything. And um, when I'm finished making my cut, okay, there we go. Uh, when I'm finished making my cut, this is going to be level right up to this point. Of course, this is the area where the, uh, the outboard is going to clamp to. And same thing on the other side. We're just going to make a nice level cut across uh, both sides of the of the transom there and that is because uh, I, I've got to cut this down because the 
Morante plywood that I'm using, the 3 8 Morante plywood. Uh, originally it was going to butt up against this inner edge right here and uh, now I'm going to have to bring it up and over and lay it on top. Well, that just throws everything else off. And so in order to correct that, and hopefully again you can see this, I've already marked it off. I'm going to have to make a cut right here on both sides and both sides are marked. I'm getting a little grainy there. It's nighttime, so. But we're going to make a cut right along here with the skill saw. I've already got the angle set on the saw. And then I'll dress up these corners right here uh, when I get done with that. And uh, same thing over here. I'm going to make a cut. Uh, there's the line right there where my finger is at. And uh, I'm just going to cut that down, bring that down level. And when I'm finished, this is kind of what it's going to look like. And again, let me get this drawing over to some better light. I have really got to do something about the light out in this garage. That's what it will look like right there. And I know we've got a very annoying shadow on that drawing. But that's what it will look like when I'm finished. Let me pull back a little bit. And so that is the uh, change that I need to make in order to uh, make the changes that I want to make to the uh, top cap. And like I said, in order to do that, you know, I've got to make a, a little cut right here. But um, it should go smoothly. I do plan to clamp a uh, uh, straight edge off to the back end and then just use that as a guide for my saw and uh, here's my saw it's already set up got the angle set but again it's just late at night I don't want to run power saw people in the house trying to sleep so I will get that done first thing in the morning uh, well maybe second thing in the morning but uh, I will get that done tomorrow and I'll get the camera set up and I will show you uh, you know I'll, I'll just take you through it so I will see you in the morning, and uh, until then, thank you for watching, and I'll be back in the morning. All right, it's the next day, and as you can see, I've got the saw guide in place, and I'm ready to make my cut. Now, I'll get that going here in just a moment as soon as I get the camera set up. I will be right back. All right, here goes. Wish me luck. Okay, and just like that, I'm done. And uh, a little bit above my line right there. That's fine, you would rather cut too little than to take too much. I can live with that. I can either rasp that down Back this zoom out a little bit. Hold on, I'm gonna stop and clean my lens here real quick. Okay, I'm back. I had to stop and clean my lens there. It gets sawdust all over. Sawdust is attracted to it like a magnet. Hopefully you can hear me over the garbage truck. But uh, as you can see, I'm just a little bit above my line right there. I could possibly come back, reset the guide right here and make one more pass. Uh, from over here, yeah, I can live with that. I can sand and rasp down to that. I might come back over here though and make one more pass and see if I can get this one just a little bit closer. Probably just got this end right here clamped a little high. So, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, so that's my second pass and it is just above the line that I measured yesterday. So, 
I'm happy with that. I can live with that. And uh, again, hopefully you can see that there. We've got a lot of glare coming in uh, from the uh, open door. It's, it's early morning. Well, not early morning, but it's about mid-morning and uh, getting a lot of Get a lot of bright light coming in through the through the door, and uh, same over here. Like I said, I can just sand or rasp that down. So, okay, got our first cut made, and uh, also got to cut these uh, braces down. And uh, again, I've got it marked. I don't know if you can see that. So there's my mark, and I'm probably just going to use a little pull saw. I'm going to use a little small hand saw. I'll take that down. I'm not going to try to take that out with any power saw. All right. Uh, we'll be back to you next segment. Okay, those two pieces are removed, and uh, just got to do the final. I just got to make that final cut right here, and then do the final sanding on these corners just to dress that up and make it look all all nice and neat. Uh, of course, this is just a rough cut, and uh, I will work on that. And then once I'm finished with that, I will show you the end result. And uh, again, stay tuned. Next segment. All right, so as you can see, I'm making progress on this right side brace. Uh, got it sanded down almost where I'm on it. I think I got about another maybe 30 seconds, maybe 16th of an inch to go. Right here, though, you see this little curve and that's from the saw blade and I had to stop right there because I didn't want to cut a slot in this area so I'm gonna to have to take that little piece out by hand and it's just tedious and it's just time-consuming and uh, uh, so that's what I'm working on right now and like I said then I gotta do that side but once again um, this is just, uh, sometimes you get into this, this type of work where it's just uh, very time consuming detail work, and, uh, but it's got to be done. All right, that's it. I'm done sanding. And I've got that edge beveled real nice there. And uh, just taking out as much material as I want to take out. And um, got this brace cut down. Now what I discovered was, was the saw blade deflected ever so slightly right here and uh, made a little gouge. It's not very deep. I'd guess no more than a 30 seconds of an inch, but uh, like you've heard me say before, thickened epoxy is a wonderful thing. And uh, then once the uh, cap is on there, like so, no one will be the wiser. So. Well, all I gotta do now is the other side. Uh, I'll see you here in a few moments. Okay folks, uh, like I said earlier, uh, the right side is done. I'm going to take you through the trimming of the uh, top part of the brace on the left side. And don't worry, I'm going to speed this up. I'm not going to subject you to another 30 minute long video. Um, I like to try to keep these videos under 20 minutes if I can. But in that last video uh, at the end there, um, it did include the Easter message. So there you go. All right, enough talking and time to start doing. Okay, so that's kind of the gist of it right there. And uh, just like over here, I've still got to do the uh, final sanding. Cut this down with a rasp and get it to the uh, dimension that I want it. And of course, I've got to remove this little chunk right here. And I will do all that off camera. And uh, I don't need to take you through that. But that's it. All right, folks, I'm done. 
Uh, fiberglass does not like sharp corners. Uh, it will tend to form air bubbles if you don't soften corners. So I just came back and softened up these corners a little bit. But it's done. Both sides. And uh, it's ready now for me to go ahead and make this uh, top cap. It's going to lay up on top of these rib extensions. And uh, let me find that beveled side here real quick. There we go. And like I said, it's just going to lay in there like so. And of course, imagine this, you know, it's one piece wrapping all the way around, making the corner, going all the way up there to that first rib. And then um, same thing for the other side. But that's it. And uh, man, come back here and we'll take a look at it. And uh, that just looks a whole lot better. And uh, I'm not worried about any little flaws or imperfections. Uh, I showed you that one here earlier, a uh, little bit of a gouge. That's actually, you know, just catch a fingernail on that. And then right here, I uh, had some of the plywood kind of chip off on the edge right here. And uh, had a little, little minor chipping right here of the cypress. But again, remember what I said earlier, thickened epoxy. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, we'll see you in the next segment. Thank you again for watching. Hey folks, welcome back. Um, yeah, I think that little modification is going to work out very well. Um, tonight, I'm a little more somber than, than normal. Um, this is being recorded on April 6th. Um, my second oldest grandson would have turned 17 years old today, but that was not God's plan. He passed away in 2007, it was just a couple of weeks before his third birthday. Um, he was my son's second child, uh, uh, his oldest child's, uh, actually my oldest granddaughter, but um, this was her little brother, uh, my son's uh, second child, like I said, and it's his oldest son. Uh, his name was Ian. Ian had been sick with strep throat just a few weeks earlier, and uh, he passed away after uh, the bacteria from that infection went into his heart. And um, that was on the morning of February 3rd in 2007. When you lose a child or a grandchild, as, as it was in our case, uh, it's something that you never completely get over. Now the wound does heal, but it leaves a scar. And, you know, we'll always wonder, you know, what he, what he would have been like. Uh, you know, how would, his, how would his life have turned out? You know, what would he look like today? But the Bible tells us, you know, that God has numbered our days. And God gave my second oldest grandson, Ian, just a, a few weeks shy of three years. And we have to accept that. Now, I do take comfort in the knowledge that because of his young age, he went immediately into the presence of Christ. I have no doubts about that. A child that young has not reached uh, the age of accountability, which is the age when they know right from wrong. They're free to choose between right and wrong, knowing full well what the consequences will be if they make the wrong choice. And it's not a certain number. It's not the age of 12 or 13 or nine or 10. It's, 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 it's like I said, it's not a specific number. Uh, but it is that age when, when uh, they know better and, you know, they know what the consequences will be, like I said. But I do know that he's in heaven right now because of the grace of God and the mercy of God. And if that was not so, then grace would not be grace and mercy would not be mercy. Now, that was a, it was a painful time for me. It was a painful time for my family. Uh... I can't think of anything else in our lives that was more painful than that. Uh, but it was especially painful for my son, of course. And uh, it was a very helpless time for me also. I remember watching my son grieve over his son and me not being able to do a thing about it. And, uh, and, and I tell you, that's a helpless feeling because I'm a dad. You know, that was my son, and I'm supposed to be able to take away, you know, his pain, and I couldn't do a thing about it. 
and, and, and that was hurtful. But in all things, in all things, let me emphasize, all means all. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And of course, that's Romans 8.28. That's a passage that's very familiar to all Christians. And it was out of that pain and it was out of that painful time in my life that my commitment to Jesus Christ was born. And I will say this, I will interject right here, that I could not have ever found healing without Jesus Christ. Prior to that, um, I had been what most people describe themselves as, uh, I had been a good person. Well, there's a problem with that. Being a good person will not get you into heaven. And I know that's a hard thing for some people to hear, but it's true. Because the question is, good compared to who? You know, if we compare ourselves to other people, okay, uh, I'm better than a, a serial killer who's sitting in prison. I'm better than a drug dealer. I'm better than somebody that sells drugs to kids. Sure. But we cannot compare ourselves to other people. The standard that we must compare ourselves to is Almighty God. And when we compare ourselves to God, we all fall short of his standard. Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul wrote these words, and I believe these words aptly describe the human condition. He said, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. None of us can stand before God on our own merit. As the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 6, all of us have become like one who is unclean, and our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Our goodness can never be good enough when compared to the perfect standards of a holy God. But there is good news, folks. When we come to saving faith in Jesus Christ, we are redeemed. And the sin debt that we owe God is paid in full by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when God looks at us, he does not see our flaws, our faults, our imperfections. He does not see our sin. He sees the righteousness of his son. He sees the righteousness of Jesus. It's a righteousness that covers us like a shield. Uh, folks, um, thank you for allowing me to share that with you. Uh, like I said, it's, a, always, uh, it's always a somber time for me, for my family, for my son. And... Uh, but like I said, you know, we, we found healing. All of us found healing in the arms of Jesus Christ. And praise be to God for that. Um, that's all I have for you tonight. And as always, you know, this channel is a ministry. Um, it, to, more often than not, it ministers to me. Hopefully it ministers to you too. And, um, you know, if you have any prayer requests, please leave those in the comment section down below. I do moderate my comments, but I do check those comments. So if you have a prayer request, please feel free to leave them down below and uh, I will get to them. Uh, I thank you and uh, I just pray God's blessings on you and uh, we will see you in the next video.